welcome everyone, and welcome to the webinar, Saving Our Site, Archiving Web Content. My name is Alicia Kidd, and I'm online here with Susan Hope Bard, and our presenters here, Maria Pretzelis and Sylvie Rawson Kass. I apologize. Thank you all so much for joining us. Now let's make sure everyone is comfortable using our webinar platform, ReadyTalk. Just to go over a little a few specifics, the chat box at the bottom left-hand corner of the screen at any time will let – you can use that, the chat box to let us know if you are having audio problems, if you are having problems hearing, or just any type of problems, just chat in there and let us know. Also, the chat box is used for your questions. We will be flagging your questions and queuing your questions for later review during our Q&A session, which is held in the last few minutes of our after the presentation. Now if you lose your Internet connection, you can reconnect using the link in the registration or from your reminder email. We are also recording this event, so all of your lines have been muted so we can get a clear and crisp recording. Also you will be able to find this recording at TechSoup's webinar page immediately right after this webinar concludes. Also you will be able, to be able to access the webinar and other upcoming webinars at our website at www.techsoup.org forward slash community forward slash events slash webinars. Now you also, again, like I said, will receive a follow-up email, and in that email you will have the recorded presentation along with any type of PowerPoints and resources. Now all I want you to do is if, if you're also on Twitter, that's amazing, we encourage you to tweet us at TechSoup or use the hashtag PoundTSWebinars. So now, Let's give you a little bit more background about TechSoup. TechSoup is headquartered here in San Francisco, California. And what I want to do is I want to ask everyone where are you located. So take a few, few seconds in the chat. There's a, quite a few of you to let us know where you are chatting from. Great, Athens, Georgia. We have Langsing, Michigan. We have Chapel Hill, North Carolina, San Mateo, Pittsburgh. Yay! So yes, we have a variety. It's a lot of people here. So welcome to everyone. And I just wanted to just reiterate, my name is Alicia Kidd. I'm the Online Learning Specialist. Also, we have Susan Hope Bard, who's the Training and Education Manager for TechSoup. Then you have Sylvie and Maria, project manager for Archive It and, Archive, and also they are both archivists here with Archive It. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to transition it to our amazing presenters, and you're going to learn some amazing content and information about archiving. Take it over. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, so my name is Maria Pretzelis. I am a project manager at the Internet Archive working specifically with uh, web archiving. Uh, so I'm really happy today to be able to kind of give you guys an introduction to uh, web archiving and an exciting uh, new grants project that we have. So our agenda today, um, I'm kind of assuming that web archiving is pretty new to you. Uh, so we're going to start off by just kind of going over some of the nuts and bolts about what web archiving is, why it's important. Um, I will give you some uh, examples of web archiving initiatives in public libraries that are happening. Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about the Community Web Project, which is the grant opportunity uh, that we have for public libraries. My colleague Sylvie is going to give you a demonstration of what some web archive collections look like um, that are being created by public librarians. Um, so then we'll wrap up with any questions that you all might have. So just wanted to um, ask a question to get this kind of yes. started. Um, yes, and thank you. Yes, so I'm going to take over and do the polling question. So what we want to do is we want to know everyone's familiar, 
knowledge base of using web archiving. So take a few seconds to um, answer this question, what is your familiarity of, with web archiving? Number one, experiencing building web archiving. Number two, using web archive, but not for me, myself. Heard of it, or what's web archiving? So take a few minutes to answer, or just a few seconds to answer the survey questions, the polling questions, so we can get some feedback. Three, two, one. Great. All right. Uh, thanks, everyone. So it really looked like um, the vast majority of you um, really were somewhat familiar with it, like you've heard of it, but probably not um, a lot of experience um, actually hands-on working with Web Archives. So that's perfect. Um, that's exactly what uh, we were hoping to reach. So a little bit about us. Um, so at the Internet Archive, we are a nonprofit digital library and archive. We are located in San Francisco, uh, neighbors with TechSoup. Um, that's actually a photograph there of our office um, in San Francisco. It's a former uh, Christian Science Church. Uh, it's big and beautiful and really uh, a fun place to work. Um, it's also a really interesting place to take a tour if you find yourself in San Francisco and want to come by. Um, just reach out to us and we can kind of coordinate that for you. Uh, we were founded in 1996 by the Internet pioneer Booster Kale, and we were officially designated a library by the State of California in 2007. So most people know us um, by the Wayback Machine. So we are freely available online at archive.org slash web. Uh, we're the largest publicly available web archive in existence. So we've been doing this uh, for a very long time, um, since 1996. Um, so we have captures of the web going all the way back to 96. Um, so that entire archive constitutes over 302 billion web pages. Um, this archive is constantly growing. Uh, we add about 1 billion URLs every week. So um, a little bit about uh, web archiving and some of the goals and the process of uh, creating these. Uh, so the goal of a web archive is to really recreate the same experience that you'd have if you visited that website on the day it was archived. So think of it as your time machine going back in time, seeing that web page um, as it was the date it was captured. So the way, uh, the way we do this, uh, we have crawlers that go out. Um, they capture as much information as possible from all of the original web, web resources. And then they use these resources to play back the archived version of the site uh, using our Wayback software. So just an example here um, of uh, web archiving. So this is nasa.gov. Uh, you can tell you're looking at an archived uh, web page. It's a little small, but the banner up at the top is just letting you know these are archived web pages. So all the way on the left, um, you have a capture from 1996. So going all the way back, you can see it's very plain, um, you know, no images, um, just really text information presented there. Uh, 2007, it's gotten a lot flashier. They've added um, some dynamic components um, and a lot of images. And 2017, um, it is a fully uh, you know, modernized site uh, with all of that content um, added as well. So by, doing a, by capturing this site um, through the years, you're able to go back and see those versions of the website from the date of capture. So if you actually went to that archived web page, you could click on any of the links and it would take you to those pages, um, and they should function just like they would if you were on the live web. So, Great. I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I apologize. Okay, you so got now it. we're now we're going to um, go to our next polling question. Now, it says here, how long on average do you think information on a website lasts? And the options you have to answer are 33 days, 92 days, 1.5 years, or 3 years. So take a few moments just to answer, to give what you think your answer is. 3, 2, 1. All right, I'm so curious to see what people guess was on this. 
Um, so you all are very smart. Um, the average uh, lifespan of a web page is, in fact, 92 days. Um, that was determined by uh, our data scientists here at the Internet Archive. Um, so basically they found that this is the time at which um, the average website has either um, the content has changed on that web page or um, it's been removed from the web altogether. So that's really the illustrating why archiving web content is so important um, because it is very ephemeral. It's not going to last very long. So I just want to switch over and talk a little bit about some web archiving uh, projects in public libraries. Uh, so in uh, 2014, uh, the NBSA uh, did a survey of web archiving in the United States. They're looking at a number of different components about web archiving, one of which is what type of organizations are doing web archiving. Uh, so they found that about 2% were coming from public libraries. So the majority of institutions doing web archiving were state and government archives um, and at the university uh, or college level. Uh, so the reason why this um, was kind of concerning to us at the Internet Archive uh, is because public libraries have such a long tradition of collecting analog materials documenting their region. I'm thinking of local history rooms with you know, amazing clipping files of newspapers and photo collections and you know, manuscript or special collections about notable uh, figures in the community. Um, a lot of um, uh, local history rooms also collect uh, municipal records as well. Uh, so as this content has transferred so that it's really being uh, increasingly published online and only online, there's a gap in these collections that are really kind of fundamental to community and local history. Um, so it's that that the uh, Community Webs project is seeking to bridge. So we do have a few public libraries who have been uh, partnering with us um, at the Internet Archive and using Archive-It, which is our uh, subscription uh, web archiving software. Uh, these libraries are also partners in the Community Web uh, Project as well. Uh, so San Francisco Public Library, um, also our neighbor, they've been a partner since 2007. Their collecting is run out of the Government Information Center. Um, so not surprisingly, they archive a lot of sites uh, related to um, regional government agencies. Um, they've got a lot of websites that they have been archiving. Um, they've got over 600 um, that they've archived over the years. So some of the topics that they collect on, uh, uh, climatological data, um, city department websites, uh, local events, like these are screenshots of these uh, web pages. So bottom right, got the Super Bowl, which was a big, big deal in San Francisco. So they collected a bunch of websites to do with that. Um, they also have some city commission websites as well. Cleveland Public Library is another partner. Um, they also collect a lot of government um, and municipal uh, websites related to Cleveland. Uh, just some screenshots of archived web pages um, around the city and government, local news, tourism, etc. Um, East Baton Rouge uh, Parish Library is a pretty new partner, but they're doing some really cool stuff. I'm really happy to be working with them. Um, they have some interesting collections, um, and Sylvie's actually going to go in and show you some of these um, during her demo. Um, but they've got um, sites related to significant local events. Um, so that includes uh, news articles that they're capturing, and it also includes social media. So we do get a you know, really common question is, can you archive social media content? You know, I've got a Facebook page or uh, Twitter um, that I need to capture, or maybe your community has um, these social media sites that are really where important conversations are happening. Um, and we definitely can archive social media. Um, and I would say at this point, the majority of our partners do archive uh, social media in, as part of their collecting uh, strategies. So just want to ask a question here. Um, do you have, does your institution have an active local history collecting program? So if you could just 
let us know just to get a sense of uh, what kind of collecting you all might do. Great. So the next question is, does your institute have active local collection programs? So yes, no, or your definition of active. So take a moment to answer that question and we'll five, four, three. All righty. Thanks, everyone. So it looks like most of you, about 60%, um, do have an active uh, local history collecting program, uh, which is great. Um, so that's exactly the type of institutions that we're hoping to reach out to so that this local history collecting can start to incorporate um, content that is exclusively online at this point. Uh, so now I'm talking specifically about the Community Web um, Project. Uh, so we, it is a two-year um, IMLS funded program. Uh, really the goal again is to empower public libraries to build collections of historically valuable web published materials that document their local communities. Um, so as part of this grant and this program, we're not dictating to libraries what content they should be capturing or the topics of those contents. Um, it's really up to the local libraries and their communities what they decide is important to capture. So a lot of people have been asking if there is a specific uh, requirement for what they're capturing, and it's completely up to um, the libraries. Uh, so what do participants get um, through this project? Um, there is an annual $3,500 stipend so that's um, every year for two years. Um, and that's to be used to attend conferences. Um, we do have cohort meetings where the other participants get together and talk about um, the projects. Um, and other professional development events. So uh, that includes um, additional or um, uh, courses maybe on digital curation or related topics. Um, it also includes a five-year subscription to Archive-It. And Archive-It is that um, web archiving software. Um, that is for five years. So even though uh, the project is only for two, we've extended it. So it extends an additional three years um, just to, so that these uh, web archiving programs can be fully rooted um, in the library within that five-year span. Um, and it also includes in-person and online trainings in uh, web archiving and also in um, outreach and um, patron engagement. So many people have asked about um, what does participation look like, how much time is this going to be uh, needing for staff. Obviously, you know we're all. Um, uh, we're all strapped for time. Uh, so we've tried to develop a program that really isn't too time intensive. Um, we have determined that on average it would be about two hours a week in staff time. Um, I do think when you're first getting to know Archive It, first learning about web archiving and getting your program established, it's likely that it would be more than two hours in the very beginning. But once it gets kind of in the groove and you've got your collections created, um, I think on average it would not be more than two hours a week. Um, so uh, it also includes six um, project-related uh, virtual trainings. Um, we are partnering with Web Junction um, on those trainings. So we'll have a whole online course space. Um, those sessions will be about an hour each, and we'll have three per year. Uh, we are also looking for a really, or to create a very active uh, cohort. So uh, we are looking for people who are willing to um, contribute to blogs um, about the project, um, who really are going to be engaged in the public library community and help kind of spread the word about um, web archiving to their colleagues. Uh, it does include travel and conferences. Um, again, those are covered by the annual stipend. Um, the first um, in-person cohort meeting is pretty soon after um, the uh, participants are, are announced. Um, that's November 2nd and 3rd in San Francisco at the Internet Archive. Um, attendance at that meeting is mandatory. So we're asking for people who uh, are applying for this project 
to be sure that they could attend that meeting. Um, we really want it to be a, a collaborative project where people are getting to know their colleagues and uh, really forming a community of librarians working on this. So we think that meeting in person is really key for that. Um, there's only so much you can do virtually. I think there's something to be said for face-to-face, -face, um, at least in the beginning. Um, and then moving forward, we want uh, a, we encourage the cohort to attend at least one uh, local, regional, or national, if you wanted to, uh, conference to speak about um, the project or to promote it. So that could be a panel presentation, could be a poster session, um, et cetera. Or if you just want to lead a discussion group, that would be cool too. So some key dates. Um, with the project. Um, applications are due Friday, August 25th. It's a pretty short application, so it shouldn't take too much time um, to apply. So I definitely encourage you not to be intimidated and give it a try. Um, we will be announcing um, the, uh, the cohort on Friday, September 8th. Uh, we're sending around, uh, I can see Susan already chatted it in, um, but on our project page there's going to be a link to the application um, there. So I'm going to turn it over to my colleague Sylvie, and she is going to give you a demonstration of some public libraries and their web archive collections. Thank you, Maria. Uh, just a moment. Let me just confirm that you can see my screen. I sure can. Okay, great. So um, here we are on archiveit.org. Um, as Maria mentioned, all of the Participants in the Community Webs program will have access to archived accounts where they will be building um, and archiving their own websites, building web uh, archive collections. This is the uh, portal that we provide um, our partner organizations, so they're able to provide public access to their archived uh, website collections. So I'm just going to scroll a little bit here. You can see that you can explore through collections up at the top or search and explore through collecting organizations here or search for a name. I'm going to go ahead and click into the East Baton Rouge Parish Library. This is um, one that Maria mentioned earlier. And this is a really great example of a, a public library um, building web archive collections. So you can see this is their um, public access page on archivet.org. Uh, they've added a description. They've uploaded their own logo. And if I scroll down a little bit, I can see the collections that they've created. So not only are they collecting um, their city website and library website on an ongoing basis, um, but they're also creating collections on events that affected their community at different times. So we can see a, a collection on Louisiana flooding, the shooting of Baldwin Sterling, and the shooting of Baton Rouge police. We click into one of these collections. That's going to open up the collection page. Again, they've added their own description and a logo here. And if I scroll down a bit, I can see um, the websites that they've been archiving in this collection. Looks like they've added a bit of information about a lot of these sites. Um, these are all related to the flooding in Louisiana. So if I click on one of these, I'm going to open it over here. So I've clicked on a URL, and that's going to bring me to a calendar page. So they've archived this website once, as we can see, on August 21st, 2016. So if I click into that, it's going to open the archived website. Give that a minute to load. So this is a news article um, about school closings due to the flooding. Um, and you can see it's an archived website because of this banner here at the top. All uh, websites archived with Archive that have this banner. You can see that it was uh, collected by the East Baton Rouge Parish Library, and it was captured on August 21st, 2016. So we're seeing this page exactly like we would have if we were looking at it back in August of 2016. Let's take a look at one more collection here. Um, I want to click into their library collection. So this is something that they're archiving uh, on a regular basis. So again, here's that logo and description for this collection. And if I scroll down a bit, I can see the website that they have archived. 
I'm going to go ahead and click into that. And I see this calendar page has a lot of entries. That means they're kind of documenting this site over time. I'm going to click into one of these captures from December 6, 2016. Let that load. And again, this is uh, telling me that this was archived by the East Baton Rouge Parish Library on December 6, 2016. Um, and I should be able to use this site the same way I would on that day. So you should be able to click through it. It's going to be interactive the same way it was. And this is also kind of a neat little artifact here. Um, we saw that the flooding, uh, the flood collection had content from August 2016. This is December and we're still seeing that uh, apparently the flood was uh, still affecting their library system. So it's kind of an interesting little piece there. Um, and with that, uh, I'm going to um, head back to our slides. Um, and I think we are about ready to open it up for questions. Uh, sorry, questions. Great. Thank you so much, um, Sylvie. That was amazing showing the demonstration. So yes, we have some great and engaging questions. The first question that was queued up is, can online web content be combined with digitized content? I'll take this one. Um, so this is uh, this grant is specifically for uh, for web-based content, so it can't be used for digitization projects. Um, so I'm assuming that's what they mean. Um, and you you could archive sites that have digitized material, but I don't know. That's probably not the best use of it. Um, so I guess the the simple answer is it's really for born digital. Um, web-based content, not digitization. Great. Now the next question is, it states here, is archive content stored on local servers or hosted on your servers? So for example, is the public facing web page for content a local or a hosted service? So we do all of the hosting um, at the Internet Archive. Um, so really, from the library perspective, all you need is an Internet connection, um, and we host and store all of that data um, for you. Um, it's also important to know that that is a commitment that we make um, going forward. Um, so you know, even beyond the five years of archive it, if you didn't continue web archiving, we would continue to host that data and provide access to that data. Great. And the questions just keep on coming. This next question states, is the training, is the training for just the libra librarian or do, is it for people or can you know, staff, library staff get the training as well? Uh, so what we want is uh, kind of one point person from the library to commit to um, you know, participating in the project for two years. Um, but you know, we do recognize that two years can be a long time. Um, so people might change jobs. So other people on the staff could certainly get um, trained as well. Um, but we do want kind of like a, a primary point person um, so that we have that cohesive community um, in the cohort. And I have another question because you offered that amazing cohort. Some people may not be able to go. So the question is. Are you planning to have another cohort next year? And around what time can people expect to hear about it for 2018 or 2019? Uh, so, I guess. so yeah, so this, this project is two years. Um, okay. And we only have funding for this one cohort. Um, okay. Assuming we're successful and we have a lot of interest, um, it definitely helps us go back to the IMLS and say, hey, there was big demand for this. and it went great, can we do it again? Um, but as of now, we only have the funding for this one time. But that's not to say it won't happen again, but don't know for sure. <laughs> okay, great. And this, is, this question is an interesting question. It's about archiving software and social media. So can, this, can archive its software archive social media 
um, or like social media sites like Facebook. Like if you have a Facebook page and you have information on there, can a libra library you know, archive a Facebook event or for local organizations? Yeah, so you definitely can archive social media sites, um, and that includes Facebook um, and, or Twitter. Um, we also have um, people archiving Instagram. Um, so yes, definitely possible, very common. I think most of our partners at this point are capturing social media content. I have a tech question. Um, it's basically about the software. So are there any IT or infrastructure requirements for participating libraries such as um, do they need a specific server, software, external hard drives, web design, nope. et cetera? Or do you guys work with if once they purchase the software to make sure that they have the right requirements? No, it's completely web-based. So it's a web-based oh, okay. application. I'm sorry, I should have made that more clear. Um, so they don't need any software to install. Um, there's no hardware requirements. All you need is an internet connection um, and your, an account, and you're good to go. So. Okay. Another question is, it states, in order for my library to archive an organization's website, I guess including the city, what kind of authorization slash permission does one need? So when they're archiving, um, is there, I guess in the intake process, is there any type of formalities that um, one library libraries needs to take before archiving? Um, no, uh, it's really um, up to your institution. Um, but on a technical level, there's no process required uh, in order to, to um, archive those websites. Okay. So. Also, also I'm referencing to community grants. Um, do you mean like uh, referencing that that's where it came from? I'm assuming so, or if they okay. were awarded. Um, oh, I see. Um, Gosh, that's a good question. I haven't really thought of it. <laughs> well, what we can what we can Possibly. do if we don't have the answer, we'll just table book that, and then we can follow up and get an answer. But that is a great question. Yeah, yeah, it would be nice to be credited, um, and I'm sure we will have ways in which we'll be um, demonstrating some of the valuable content that has been collected as part of this grant. But we don't have a specific requirement at this point. And we're loving these questions. Um, we do have time for a few more. So uh, this is an interesting question. It says, can a public library archive at collections be embedded on the library's website, or do patrons need to access the content through archive at site? So content, do they um, need to go through archive it, or can yeah. it, I guess, go through the library? To yeah. No, it can be. It can be embedded, um, or we call it, you can make a landing page um, mm -hmm. that would, uh, you know, allow that content um, to sort of stay within um, the institution website. So it's definitely possible. We do have a lot of partners that do that. Okay, and this is a follow-up question to um, regarding the grant getting. I guess getting can it be? How should I say um, archive? So the follow-up in reference to the grant. The question is, for the grant, one of the questions asks whether our institution will sign an agreement. So is there a place where we can go to view the agreement, or can you give us an idea of what is in it? Uh -huh. That is a good question. I've been asked a few times. Uh, we're actually, to be honest, we're in the process of putting it together right now. Um, but really, it's just this standard sort of um, MOU that sort of um, outlines uh, what the project is, um, what the responsibilities are of the participating organization, um, but I don't think it's it's definitely not intended to be anything scary or um, you know raise red flags um, from your uh, you know from library legal team. Great, and with with this amazing topic, with the questions just keep on coming. So here's another one. It says, is there a, cup, a chance multiple partners would archive the same site? For example, do you monitor that and does it matter? 
That is a great question. Um, there's always a chance of that. Um, we don't monitor it um, because it's not just a matter of archiving the same site. You might be archiving at a different frequency. You know, maybe you're archiving it just once. I archive it um, every month. Content's different. Um, so you certainly can search archiveit.org and see if anybody else is capturing that um, web page. Um, but it's not something that we would prevent or necessarily flag. Great. And this is in reference, I think, to the cohort. How many public libraries do you hope will apply and be awarded? a good question. Um, we hope that lots and lots of public libraries will apply because, as I mentioned, it will help us go to the IMLS and you know, prove that this has been an um, important project um, and there was a lot of interest. So it really helps us kind of make our case. Um, it is a pretty small cohort. Um, it's the 15 libraries. Um, and we kept it at that size so that we could have a real community of um, people doing this uh, and there would be that sort of collaborative nature um, of it. So it's 15 libraries. Great. And another question I have here says, are there any copyright issues with archiving other organization sites? Uh, that's a great question. We get asked that a lot. Um, so with copyright, um, we really kind of leave that up to um, our partners, or in, you know, in this case, the participants in the cohort, to um, sort of be responsible for um, following their own institutional policy regarding these things. Um, I can tell you that um, different institutions really run the gamut for how they handle those issues. Uh, some some institutions reach out and request permission um, before uh, they are capturing a site. Some people uh, just reach out and say, I'm going to, you know, we are capturing this historically important material. Um, let us know if you don't want us to. So basically, an opt out. Um, some people just go, some institutions will go and archive that site and then, you know, respond to takedown requests. So that would be, you know, I tell you, please take down this, this site, um, and then you would uh, remove it from your archive. So there's every institution has their own policy, um, and uh, we don't um, try and uh, enforce any one policy because there are so many different ways of approaching it. And I, I have another question that's related, but you've probably answered it, but I'll just ask the question. It's in reference to copyright. It says, do we need to solicit a sign agreement from the owner of a site in order to archive it? Yeah, so again, it's, it's, it's your institutional policy. So um, some institutions do that. Um, I, there is some documentation, um, mostly in the university setting, about how they have approach this. Um, I think the majority do not do that. Um, but <clears throat> excuse me, there are some institutions that do seek that sort of actual um, uh, agreement before they're capturing sites. But I would not say that's the majority. But again, from our perspective, that's kind of on um, the partner's um, policies to decide how they're going to approach that. Great. And then I have a question that says, can records of archive sites be linked between Archive It and library OPAC catalogs slash catalogs? OPAC uh -huh. slash catalogs. Um, to an extent, um, we do have um, some feeds that I think would work for that. I'd need to know specifically what kind it was. Um, and. Uh, we are working on a project with WorldCat um, that might allow something like that. Um, but for the most part, most institutions, you know, you can have a landing page on your site um, where you're pulling in all the data from Archive It. Um, moving it into an OPAC kind of depends on um, how your data is organized and what kind of system you're in. Great. And this is another, I guess, follow-up question. What if 
a person asks, what if my city does not want me to archive their site, but I do? Does um, if your city does not want you to archive their site, but you do. Um, yes, is there any ramifications to that, or it's only if, I guess, they find out? Yeah. Is, yeah, well, I guess in that case, um, which I have never, uh, you know, especially for a city site, I've never experienced, um, that, you know, you can certainly request that we remove it um, from your web archive, which we can do very quickly. So um, that, in that case, we, we call it a takedown request, and um, you can just remove it from uh, your archive. I have a question in reference to the cohort. Um, they're looking, one person is looking at the page to apply, but it says read. Basically, it's just not allowing them to access the link. So is the application available? Um, yeah, I'm not sure. It's definitely available. Um, okay. There is a link to the application on the project page. Okay. And then also here I have one. It says, does archive it capture picture slash media files on sites and PDFs or other documents that might be linked on the archive site? Yes. Um, so you definitely – Everything on a page, um, embedded material like um, uh, embedded images or uh, PDFs or videos, um, those can be um, captured as part of uh, an archive. Now I have another follow-up question in reference to the the one prior about if the city if they don't if the city does not want you to archive it. Another question related says. Um, Relating to the question about a city not wanting to wanting the site to be archived, is there a means to keep archive sites private but still in the archive system? Um, yes, uh, you can what we call dark um, uh, a page, so that would mean that it's still being archived, but it's not publicly viewable. Or you can actually, I guess in this instance, what you'd want to do is you could just um, make it not publicly available on the website. So that means that you can view it. Um, you've captured it, but it's not going to be listed as one of the websites. So the public wouldn't have access to that content. So that's probably a good way to work around if you were capturing something that you thought was really important, but you weren't sure if you were ready to make it publicly available, you can definitely do that. Great. And then one person made basically a comment about when we talked about the copyright, um, saying isn't the, internet, um, isn't the Internet Archive the organization? So basically it's just leaving it up to the organization to make that decision versus it being enforced, you know, and it potentially could be a violation of rights of copyright holders. So it was more of a statement mm -hmm. question. So is there work around yeah. that or do, have you guys ever come across anything where, you know? We have never had a problem with that. Um, you know, I think we, the Internet Archive specifically with web archiving, we work with hundreds and hundreds of institutions um, that are creating their own collections of web content. Every institution has um, different collecting strategies and policies about how they're getting that content and how they work their permissions. Um, okay. So, you know, there's there's no constructive way for us to be involved in that process, and we really don't think of it as our place um, because it's the institutional decision about how they want to handle that. Right. And um, here's one great question about how will you determine which libraries will be chosen for the cohort? That is a, that is a great question. So we're really hoping to get a diverse group of libraries. Um, so we're hoping to get um, geographically diverse. We want urban and rural um, around, you know, distributed around the country. Um, we're also looking for um, participants who you know, are really excited and motivated to uh, help us, you know, spread the word about web archiving and who are active in their communities. 
Um, so those are kind of the um, the type of library that we're looking for. But you know, I wouldn't be dissuaded if you're a small public library or you have a small staff. Um, definitely, uh, we want to have a broad range of types of libraries that are engaged in this. Right. Also, either one of you can answer this. It's in reference because we have people highly interested in this cohort. The, it said, one person is saying that the application set on the website says the application says to review the participant overview, but where is it? So where, I guess, is the application on the website? Um, oh, I see. Yeah. It just I, says so okay. participants. Sorry, I, I can jump in yeah. here. I see where it says that on the website, and I think we're referring mm -hmm. to the um, what does participation look like section on the, uh, the um, information page, unless Maria, mm -hmm. you have another thought on that. Yeah, so what do you mean by the, you mean on the actual application, just the section below? So it says yeah, the application. Yeah, the participant overview for details on the project. I think we're referring to the, um, the information on the, uh, the information page that's linked above, in the paragraph above. We okay. can make that a little so bit more So we're just clear. referring to the paragraph above. Okay, so there's no separate page. There's, it's just that same document. We're just saying refer to the above for, okay. Great. And another question is, beyond the five-year funded grant time, are there different pricing schemes for different um, size libra libraries to continue using software to continue the project? So what if mm -hmm. I want to continue but can't afford it? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so we do work, there's definitely different pricing schemes depending on how much they're collecting. Um, and you know, we're a nonprofit and our goal is to have as many institutions web archiving as possible. So you know, we definitely would be willing to you know, work with a, a cohort member to make sure that they could continue. Um, using the, the software. Um, so we've got, we've got many nonprofits that, um, I don't know how should I say, get subsidized accounts um, of various levels. So um, we're pretty, we can be, um, we definitely want to work with the community to make sure that it's feasible uh, for them. So great. These were some amazing questions, and thank you to our presenters for just answering those in-depth questions. Um, here, um, if you want to learn more about Archive It and just their amazing social media, here on the Learn More page we have their actual blog. We have their Twitter, which is at archiveit.org. We have the Facebook. We have their um, Web Archiving Lifecycle White Paper and community web information websites, and also their emails. Yes, and their emails are maria at archive.org, as well as Sylvia, Sylvie, I apologize, at archive.org. Now did you guys have any closing statements? Because I'm sure you do. If not, this was amazing. No, I just um, thank you everyone for coming and some really great questions. Also, want to just thank TechSoup for being such a wonderful host and being so supportive of the project. It was really great working with you. And um, yeah, thank you. And feel free to reach out to Sylvie or myself uh, with any questions um, that we didn't uh, get to answer today. And definitely encourage you all to just give the application a try. Um, you know, like I said, it's pretty short and um, it uh, is an exciting project. So I'm really happy to be working with the public library community on this. And before we close, we actually have one more question um, here. And it says, what if sites I would like to archive are on my community web grants project are already represented in, I guess, in the archive? Do they differ? Mm -hmm. So for example, if there's duplication, Right, that's a great question. Um, so the the general Wayback Machine, um, those are the the crawls that we run um, on a regular basis. Um, it's not capturing every single website out there or 
every single website to completion. So even if it had a capture of a page that you wanted to capture, um, it, wouldn't, it probably doesn't have it from the time that you want it. And it's probably not going to be totally comprehensive. So you know, it might have a few pages in the site. It might not have the entire website, just depending on, on uh, how it was captured. So by collecting it, um, you, you engage in the act of curating this collection. So you're just finding that these group of sites, all related to my community, um, are being captured at this frequency. Maybe it's, it's a weekly blog or something, and you make sure you're getting all of that content. Um, and you also are curating that um, for your patrons as well. I hope that answers well, the question. Yes, it does. So, and thank you both to our presenters. And before we conclude, we just want to give, um, just wanted to engage the audience to let us know what did you guys learn from this amazing archived um, librarian presentation. So just take a few moments to chat of what you learned and what you didn't know now, but you know now, what you didn't know before and what you know now. Just take a few minutes or a few seconds to chat what you learned from this great presentation. Great. Now, before we go, we want to make sure that everyone, before, while this concludes, what you want to do is you always want to go to our website, which is techsoup.course.tc forward slash catalog. This is our university where you can check out um, our online courses. Um, it's free to join. There's a lot of great information in reference to just a lot of information that will help libraries as well as um, we expose you to a multitude of things that will help enhance your libraries as well as your staff and just it gives you a plethora of information. So again, feel free to join that website and explore TechSoup. Go to the catalog and just explore. Also, we have some amazing upcoming webinars and events coming up on the 17th, How to Get Tech Donations, a special Tech um, Soup Tour on the 22nd. You know, everyone uses Excel, so this is going to be an amazing webinar for anyone who wants to use Excel, who wants to know about Excel to enhance their work process. And then finally, we have another webinar on the 24th, Creating Accessibility Online Resources for People with Disabilities. So make sure you go to our TechSoup um, webinar events page for more information. And in closing, I want to thank everyone for attending. I also want to thank our sponsor, ReadyTalk, for allowing us to use this great platform. And everyone have an amazing day. And make sure to answer the survey you will get and thank everyone. Make sure to answer the survey. Um, you will also get this, pre this recording really shortly along with the, any type of PowerPoint. Thank you everyone. Have a great evening or day. <laughs>